about uh, three results, um, Reynolds average turbulence, renormalized perturbation theory, and a um, reconstruction theorem. These are um, uh, terminologies from quantum field theory, and um, they should uh, they have a role in turbulence, and that's really the main thing I'm explaining. But first of all, I'll talk about Reynolds average turbulence. Uh, so you can get the Reynolds averaging is a solution of the Navier-Stokes equation. Um, now, that is um, fairly straightforward. Uh, you take the gradient of the Reynolds stress, and <clears throat> that's the source term that is, results from Reynolds averaging. Uh, <clears throat> however, a naive calculation uh, gives you um, not a solution in the normal Hilbert space, but in a um, Sobolev space with an index minus one, which isn't what you want. So um, the uh, main result is that we can um, deal with the, uh, the zero and get it into the uh, space of L2 uh, vector fields, and then the Reynolds average solution is a solution in the normal uh, L2 space of a vector field. That, that's this um, result. So the, um, the space you want to work in is the um, L2 space of um, vector fields. And um, you can define a um, space with uh, S derivatives. And the Reynolds stress is given by this formula. <clears throat> It results from uh, running an average through a nonlinear term, and this is what comes out, because you get the gradient of the Reynolds stress. Uh, and <clears throat> getting the gradient of the Reynolds stress in H minus one, so it is lacking one derivative, is rather easy. And then you get a solution that's in H minus one isn't what you want. So we prove that the gradient of the Reynolds stress is zero as an element of H. That's, that's the main part of this part of the talk. It's a consequence of incompressibility, and it's a property of the Navier-Stokes nonlinear term, which is shared by R. This uh, <clears throat> is not terribly difficult, but it seems to have been a major problem, and it's been cited by um, uh, people who work in, um, in, the, in these matters. Now, I want to talk about the main part of this talk is renormalized perturbation theory. The weak solutions of the Navier-Stokes equation are derived by, defined by the Luray hopp construction com based on compactness and convergent subsequences. Young measure, which is a wildly, widely studied class of solutions, has a very deep theoretical framework, and it's a subclass of the Luray hopp solutions. Now, the point to renormalize perturbation theory is that it's a framework for all weak solutions, not for a subclass. And um, the Young measure, uh, which has a restriction on it, uh, has at least as a minimum, it, is a, um, it, it occurs in the decay of turbulence as a second order phase transition. Um, and so renormalized perturbation theory meets the need of an analytic framework for all weak solutions. And that would be the major part of this talk. Uh, so it's defined inductively, and the induction starts with the Lagrangian, or perhaps you could say the identity operator. Um, and it is valid for all weak solutions. And the um, Lagrangian is a function on phase space. Any probability measure on phase space reduced by particle interchange symmetry, if we have um, no, no mixing, um, uh, defines the action as an integral of the Lagrangian. And an Euler-Lagrange variation defines solutions of the Navier-Stokes equation. So the goal of uh, Renormalized perturbation theory is to define the exponential of Lagrangian. Uh, and that is the physical vacuum state. And constructing the physical vacuum state has always been a huge challenge. 
uh, and uh, that will be solved within this talk. Um, we normalize perturbation theory starts with the identity and then the identity plus Lagrangian, Lagrangian plus Lagrangian plus Lagrangian squared over two and so forth. That's a normal perturbation theory, an exponential series. The infinities of turbulence, which are well known, <coughs> infinite integrals, which are well known, <clears throat> are made worse by squaring the Lagrangian, and you have to do something to deal with those so you can you can do them. Renormalization allows a renormalized addition of each new factor to the existing expansion step. And um, you can <clears throat> also get multi-particle states. Uh, that's a terminology from quantum field theory, but it's higher order turbulent states, which are not vacuum states. And uh, that's by taking functional derivatives with regard to the Lagrangian. Um, so I wanted to go through the inductive step of uh, renormalized perturbation theory. I don't believe this is standard lore within turbulence. And so this might be uh, unfamiliar. This is standard <clears throat> quantum field theory terminology, but I think not known in the turbulence community to a great extent. Um, so instead of, <clears throat> uh, if X is a quadratic pair from the Lagrangian, uh, instead of uh, taking X times another one, uh, what you already have, you take X U minus the expectation value of X U. That, that's the... And you, yes. Are you talking about the same thing as while the function of integral? I'm talking about turbulence, but it's the same language as quantum so field theory. I'm asking whether they're talking about while the function of integral for turbulence. I don't understand the question. What, what is? I mean, uh, while function of turbulence, like. Uh, Why does turbulence have infinities? What? A person's name. Wild. Wild, yeah. Not, not wild. Maybe you write your Lagrangian and we would understand what is your Lagrangian. Well, the Lagrangian um, for turbulence is, um, has been published. I, I didn't put it into this talk. It's rather a technical thing. Um, but it is, um, uh, and it is rather more complicated than the Lagrangian for quantum field theory, um, but it has been it has been worked out, and so there's a formula for the Lagrangian. Um, <clears throat> now the um, the adding a new pair is you do the normal thing, and then you subtract the expectation value, and that is um, uh, that's the definition. There's another step where you also can take a functional derivative uh, of uh, uh, of the new of the new step. So let me um, go through this. Uh, um, the um, exponential of Lagrangian is not convergent under renormalized perturbation theory. And you have to get there by some indirect way, which we will show by Hilbert space convergence methods. That's um, also the case with your measures. They don't get everything. They, they have to complete their Hilbert space. Um, but there are um, some of the complicated states are convergent, and you, you, you build on those. So this depends on a theory of, from quantum field theory called Feynman diagrams. And a Feynman diagram for a quadratic term in the Lagrangian is simply has um, a vertex with four lines. So that's pretty simple. And it represents um, du dxj, duk dx, uh, I, uh, L. So it, it represents a quadratic um, term in the Lagrangian looking like that. And that's, that's the basis of a Feynman diagram, but they get composed in very complicated ways, and I want to explain some of that. 
So for the inductive step, which is uh, say Q1, Q2 minus the expectation value of Q1, Q2, if we're just doing this at the beginning, then you have two lines and they're joined by a contraction line. So that uh, Feynman diagram shows you um, how to do that construction. Uh, and the second step, which is the um, uh, functional derivative uh, of two external lines will connect them. And that is the Feynman diagram written down below. And so that's dx squared dq squared. So uh, uh, now there's something called a Bell expansion for prime diagrams. <clears throat> and it is roughly speaking um, that any polynomial can be written as a product of prime factors. So we all know that from linear algebra. Um, and uh, the prime factors uh, uh, are labeled in an obvious way by you take all the partitions of one to J, if you have J of them, take all the partitions and you take a disjoint union and the disjoint union, um, uh, each element of that disjoint union can be a prime factor. And those are all possible prime factors and that's called a Bell expansion. Now, um, the prime sequences come in an order, the X1, X2, XK are in an order. And that is very important issue. Those are those blue lines that have an arrowhead, so they have a direction. So you go from X1 to X2, X2 to X3, and so on. That's the first contraction. Now, you want to have the reverse contraction so it doesn't factorize. So it has to go all the way around in the other direction. And so there's a no choice in the, um, in the way that the second contraction is, is located in a prime factor. There's no choice. So that seems a little bit um, arbitrary and a little bit uh, improbable. And that is actually the main point is that these long prime sequences are improbable. And that has a lot to do with the convergence that we find. Uh, so let me continue. Uh, and then we need Sterling's formula, which is a way of dealing with factors of n factorial and um, because we are uh, have particle exchange symmetry, you can uh, you have an n factorial in the denominator for every expression. Uh, those are the in indistinguishable particles. Uh, and in our expansion, we have a j which is n over two. We have two of them because you get one from um, the exponent has a j, and you get another from the um, Bell expansion. So. Uh, those two balance out, and that's very nice. And that's what Sterling, our analysis of Sterling's formula says. So our main result is that the normalized convert perturbation theory converges for a dense set of states. When it does not converge, you use Hilbert space limits and the reconstruction theorem. The reconstruction theorem simply says you can complete all the states that you didn't get in the first place. Uh, so uh, the problem in this uh, to convergence is the combinatorial counting of Feynman diagrams. There are too many small ones. And the small ones are probable, not improbable. And there's too many of them, so you can't get rid of them. And so they're the obstacle to direct convergence. The reconstruction theorem, uh, which comes from quantum field theory and work of um, Streeter and Whiteman, and has been extended to gauge theories in this reference. Uh, uh, you need a positive definite inner product, and you need um, uh, uh, a dense set of uh, a dense set of construction, and then you divide out by the null vectors. There won't be any, and the quotient is the Hilbert space. And that's the completed Hilbert space. Uh, so this is a less technical version. Finite order, and in many cases, infinite order, uh, defines a dense set of turbulent states. 
The remainder is Hilbert space limits guaranteed by reconstruction. The Young measures are likewise constructed on a dense subspace with Hilbert space limits. Now, I want to explain where the probabilities come from with long uh, prime sequences. So a prime sequence has a probability uh, one over J factorial for that prime sequence, but you have an arbitrary starting point. So there's a J over J factorial. So it's one over J minus one factorial. And um, uh, that's the small probability and as long as J is uh, bigger than uh, one, uh, I guess you want J bigger than two, um, you get uh, a one over J and that result is um, Borel resummable. Uh, uh, so Borel resummation says that uh, a series of partial sums, it's removable if um, this exponential-like sum uh, has a limit. And the limit is, um, the theorem is that if the um, partial sums are bounded by k to the n over n factorial to some power epsilon, then it's Borel resummable. So in particular, we usually have epsilon equals one. And that that's, um, that's how we get uh, improbable terms to, to be um, Borel summable. Um, so for the pure quadratic expansions, the Lagrangian is a sum of quadratic and linear terms. For the pure quadratic expansion, uh, renormalized perturbation theory is Borel resummable convergent. And with um, exceptions for uh, small diagrams, which you then construct by taking an exponential map. And that exponential map is the form of the reconstruction theorem. Uh, now we want to consider the linear terms in the Lagrangian. And this is <clears throat> something that does, um, arises in a much more serious form than it does in quantum field theory. And it is a huge problem. Um, but I'll show you how we get past that. So the, uh, the linear terms <clears throat> contract to one another or um, with a Q at one or two locations and they have new combinatorial factors J squared. Now you might have noticed that J squares were just in balance. So if you add a new J, uh, J factorial, if you add a new J factorial, it's a disaster. And so these things are disasters. And so we cannot do the uh, summation for them. So the excluded case, um, uh, the vacuum and the mass, which is a second order diagram and the charge, which is a third order diagram. Th um, uh, and then all the tadpoles, these are the excluded diagrams. <clears throat> which the, uh, the fourth one is the bigger exception of these. Now, um, how am I doing on time? What? Well, um, why do we exclude cases one to three? So let me go back and show you what they were. These are um, things that might have converged, but they converge in the wrong Hilbert space. So you want the answer to belong to L2 and not to some um, uh, Sobolev space of uh, distributions. So you exclude those because, and, and you get recover them by an exponential map. And power counting is a form of anali analysis of a Feynman diagram, which tells you uh, what is divergent and what isn't in the ultraviolet direction. We're doing everything in a finite volume. So the only divergences are the ultraviolet divergences. So the ultraviolet divergences um, uh, are governed by um, power counting, and that's a standard tool. Um, uh, so uh, I would come to the conclusion that we solved one problem, which was the mean is a solution of the Navier-Stokes. We um, 
originally had an idea that that mean would be an, um, meaningful for um, major problems in turbulence. It turns out uh, we believe actually that the mean is smooth, and if it is smooth, that doesn't settle anything major. Why doesn't it settle? Because it does not have general initial conditions. So we had an idea we were going to solve a major problem with the mean. We cannot. All you can do is solve a problem, even if we succeeded, um, with, a, um, uh, with special initial conditions. Um, in any case, we have reintroduced renormalized perturbation theory with a reconstruction. Um, now, the next conclusion is that this extends virtually without change to the Euler equation. So the scaling limits of um, Navier-Stokes bring into the Euler equation, and this is a theory which allows you to analyze that scaling limit. So it, it has, <coughs> has all the scaling properties built in. Um, okay, so this is the uh, team working with me. So thank you. Thank you. Any comments and questions? Please. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for the talk. It's fascinating, and um, yeah. <clears throat> First, I never thought that methods developed in quantum mechanics can be applied directly to turbulence. Uh, but the question is, uh, can quantum mechanics understand how these Dyson series and similar expansions are conducted? You've got particles and their big energy eigenstates, and then they have a little bit of interactions. And this little bit is a small parameter. And again, you might have asymptotic series which might not converge, and probably it's not converging in many cases. Even as non-converging series, it's useful. But yes, you can renormalize it, taking um, infinities out and, and have them converging in one way or another. But what is a small parameter in case of turbulence? The, turbulence generally doesn't have a small parameter, which is a natural small parameter. The small parameter is one over the Reynolds number. Yes, very simple answer. I mean, it, it, that's a sort, of, sort of a common sense answer. That's not a very deep answer. The uh, small parameter is the, uh, conver well, where it, conver it doesn't always converge, but where it converges, um, <clears throat> it's the sum of the, um, it's the sum of all these diagrams. Uh, and the, the, the controlling the J factorials. Okay, and the, and I, I understand your answer, but uh, if, you, if you take Euler as a zero approximation solution, Euler equation, it doesn't have any dissipation. So it's not even close to real turbulence, and it cannot be close. So a your zero order solution, which is solution at Reynolds number is in, is in the infinite, no viscosity, is not a good approximation at all. It's a very long distance between whatever solution you're seeking for turbulence and... Uh, well, what, what I'm saying is that in this tool, in this, within this tool, the uh, Euler limit is a uniform. You, you can do it where you don't even notice the difference. It's uniform. You can take the viscosity to zero uniformly. So it, it, um, it, since it's a theory, you could say it's a theory of the Euler equation. It's also a theory of the Navier-Stokes equation, uniform as the viscosity goes to zero. So it's like a Stirling formula, right? Like your uniform convergence, but not a point-wise convergence as well. I don't understand this because... There is a uniform convergence, but not a point-wise convergence. Like a Stirling formula, exactly as you guys say. Yes, like a Stirling formula, because it's a uniform convergence. Okay. But anyway, yes, thanks. Thank you. Please, please. Thanks. On this uh, discussion we just had, this is, you're solving for weak solutions, which is, it seems important. Right. Smooth solutions, which is not the same as 
a strong solutions, okay? Could you perhaps uh, clarify the relationship between like weak solutions, smooth solutions, and filtered solutions like LES? <clears throat> well, um, in the uh, Young Measure Framework, uh, the solutions are strong except for isolated points. And, and at those isolated points, they're only weak solutions. And in a, a um, in a um, entropy maximizing solution, which is the physical solution, uh, they're not they're uh, and we haven't proved this yet. But you're so you're asking a conjecture. Well, I can only answer as a conjecture. Uh, it it should have these singular points everywhere. Are you telling us that your perturbation expansion goes in inverse? power of Reynolds number? What is that? Is your perturbation theory expansion one over Reynolds number? Do we allow any Reynolds number? Yes. Then your zero approximation is exact solution of circle. Then it's what? If you are expanding to the inverse Reynolds number, then the zero approximation of your theory is exact solution of circles. That can't be. Because while the diagram technique goes in uh, Reynolds number, the bigger Reynolds number, the higher uh, the terms of the <clears throat> The expansion is uniform in the, if you, you have to change the Sobolev spaces because the divergence and the power counting changes. If you change the Sobolev spaces, then it's uniform in the, uh, in the um, Euler equation limit. And the expansion is convergent, but in this generalized sense, where uh, you have to take uh, Hilbert space limits for things that are not convergent. Your expansion parameter is Reynolds number or one over Reynolds number? Uh, uh, Professor Glim discussed in uniform convergence, not a point-wise convergence. It's a different sort of convergence. It's a I'm uniform asking convergence. simpler question, not about convergence. I'm asking what is expansion parameter? Uh, I don't think we're expanding. In the, no, we're not expanding. In e There's two singularities. There's the uh divergent diagrams and there's the expansion singularities and the divergent diagrams are related to the reynolds number and that's an expansion one over reynolds number but there's a separate divergence unrelated to that and that has to do with the divergence of the rpt series and so that what is expansion parameter for rpt <clears throat> well that's these j factorials no no parameter small parameter what is small parameter uh, um, <clears throat> well, uh, I'm not sure I can answer that right away, but um, basically it's an expansion having to do with the J factorials, and when they fail, then you have to go to Hilbert space methods. So when they succeed, it's these large diagrams that are improbable. I'm asking because in the wild diagram technique, the expansion parameter is Reynolds number, so a small Reynolds number you have perturbation there, and there are two there are there are two two singularities at it, and they're unrelated and you're talking about the ultraviolet singularities no there is no ultraviolet there is no infinity yeah yeah the ultraviolet the, the divergent integrals of, of turbulence are ultraviolet uh, divergences there is no ultraviolet divergence in turbulence because there is no the, the, the main the means and the and the uh, and so on, or infinite. If you do take an expectation value, you can easily write down a divergent integral in, quant in, um, in turbulence. Professor, may I ask a question also, uh, if possible? Is it, uh, uh, like, you know, the solution, the structure of the solution, um, you, it, it is my understanding that it is presumed that the dynamics you consider is uniform and isotropic. A physical assumption, right? It's a uniform and isotropic. Yeah. So, if you, there would be some, say, anisotropy or maybe some non-uniformity due to, due to the physical conditions, would it be possible to account it for within the... Yeah, we can have uh, steps, a general right? initial conditions. General initial conditions. Yeah. If, like, you know, there might be some, say, non-uniformities, interfaces, separation of phases within... Yeah, well, that, that is a very interesting question. We did not consider a multi-phase. You don't consider But it, it, uh, it, it would be an extension, a logical extension of this theory. We did not do that. 
but it's possible. Well, um, in the language of conjectures, conjectures yes, 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 I believe it's possible. In the language of the proved theorems, it hasn't happened yet. So it's like another 10, yeah. 5, yeah. whatever number years of yeah, research? Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I just want to continue with this. Uh, you mentioned that the Chinese people are You mentioned the singularities, and the singularities have, uh, as you mentioned, maybe a dense, uh, a dense set in a, in, a, in a physical space. Now, if you compare these singularities and their locations to, you know, when Reynolds number in a, in a turbulent flow gets higher, higher and higher, it's a process of internal intermittency where dissipation regions are concentrated in some relatively, relatively small volumes and areas. Now, if you can compare what you observe in your mathematical proofs to real physical experiments when Reynolds number gets to infinity, can, can, you, can you comment on this, how this high dissipation region where you might have indeed some singularities at the limit of very high Well, I, th I think your talk relates to these boundary layer. Uh, we had a boundary layer talk with the high dissipation region, uh, but we're not, <clears throat> I think that's really outside of this uh, I don't think we address your question in our talk. Yeah, yeah, but th that's what you're trying to prove. Well, uh, what we're I trying might... to prove is a constructive program for, for the, uh, the turbulent state. And the turbulent state is reached only by Hilbert space methods. Uh, and it's based on approximation of things that are, that are convergent. And we have a convergent expansion for uh, a dense set of states. And then you get the full turbulent state by, by limits. It might be related to physical experiments. That's what I'm saying. Physical experiments which indicate... Are there physical experiments? Yeah. Well, s s yeah, sorry to many, interrupt, yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, it's almost time. Uh, if you have any questions, please discuss during the coffee break or lunch. Thank you. Thank, thanks to the, the, to the speaker again.